Hello, welcome back to Freddy in the Shed. Now, if you've followed the channel for a few years, you'll notice on some videos, you'll see me use a small infrared handheld thermometer. And a couple of people have commented and said, Fred, where did you get that from? And it was just something that I bought very cheap on eBay and I've never really supplied a link because the seller is probably long gone. And more recently over on Fred in the Shed 2 I did a review on a portable air conditioning unit and I used that handheld thermometer. Now Urken Hill, they saw that video and they got in contact with me and said Fred, well we supply these handheld thermometers, very good quality versions of what you're using. If we send you one in, would you do a review? And I said, yeah, in a Why second, not? we'll open the box, see what we get for the money, and then we'll take it outside. I've just literally driven my car, so it's nice and hot. We'll do some testing, to see how it works. But anyway, let's see what we get. This is the uh, Rook 600 SP model. There's a 400 model, I'm not quite sure what the difference is. So straight out, straight out of the box there, um, a nice instruction booklet, very, very clear. Um, I do, yeah, I do like that. And then we've got the thermometer itself. Comes in a very nice case. Very nice cloth case with a belt loop, which is elasticated. I do like that. You can buy this for just a few pounds cheaper, two or three pounds cheaper, if you don't want the case. Personally, I, I, I like cases. I like to put things back in cases. And there we go. There's the unit itself. Very light in the hands. It doesn't feel more than a couple of hundred grams. So in a nutshell, literally all you do, squeeze the trigger. Can you see that? And then you get a temperature reading. You can move it around, try different surfaces. Just around the shack here, you can see so different surfaces vary. That's in centigrade. You can set it to Fahrenheit if you prefer. It does have an alarm function, so you can set a maximum high temperature and a minimum low temperature. And if it goes above that, it will send an alarm. Accuracy wise, it says in the book there, from zero to 100 degrees, it's accurate to 1.5 degrees centigrade. Now there is a calibration setting in here. You, it, it's auto calibrated when you get it, but you can manually set the calibration and there's a scale if there's certain materials that you want to test all the time and that will improve the accuracy even more. A few other menu options you can choose. For example, you can turn the backlight on and off. Also the guiding laser, that can be turned on and off. It would save battery power. I mean, in practice, you're not going to be using this all the time. The batteries that were supplied in my cheap one were the originals and it's still going. Yeah, overall, <coughs> feels quite nice actually. I, I, I thought that might have been rubberized originally, but it is hard plastic, but it's not an expensive item. Anyway, let's, um, let's take this downstairs. Let, let's start playing around with it. When you get one of these, you just can't help it. It's addictive. You want to start pushing and pointing at things just to read the temperature. So let's take this down into the garage and let's see how it works in the field. In the past, I've personally found these devices useful for automotive diagnostics. Dead easy to use. You simply point the laser at the item you want to test and then move around your engine bay. Quite good for testing your coolant temperature, things like hoses to radiators to check your thermostat is working, turbo cooling pipes, your inlet manifolds, and even your car battery to make sure that that's not overheating. Also, for brakes, a very useful device just to check that your calipers aren't sticking, overheating the discs, and you can even check the running temperatures of your tyres. Useful to have one in the radio shack. You can keep a close eye on the finals on the radio so it doesn't get too hot. And if you're running a linear amplifier, you can keep an eye on that as well. And it's not just big boy toys. You can use this anywhere in the home, perhaps in the kitchen, check out certain components, pots and pans, even your kettle. Works fine outdoors as well as indoors. Now it says it's not for accurate readings on humans and animals, but it's picking up Bella absolutely fine here. Another thing that impressed me is the range. Although I can't even see the laser dot, it's picking up the back fence and that's quite a few feet away. So yeah, that's pretty good. And finally, although it's not the intended use, the laser spotter doubles as a pretty good amusement device for your dog or your cat. Bella absolutely loves it and there you go not much else 
I can say works perfectly fine out of the box. It's accurate enough for general use. Like I say, there are two versions. If you don't want the rather nice carry case there, you can save yourself two or three pounds and just buy the unit itself. I will put links to Erkin Hill's shop there in the description. I'll be a bit cheeky if I do get a discount code I'll add that as well, make it even uh, more cheaper. But as for now, well, I hope you've enjoyed the video. That's it. There's the thumbs up from Fred in the Shed. Please give it to me down below. I would really appreciate that. Helps me, helps the channel. And as always, such a small channel. Do appreciate your view time. Thanks for dropping by. Stay safe, look after each other. Catch you on the next one. Cheers.